Okay, so I've now got the engine lined up at the, uh, the highest and furthest over position. That's the uh, 21 degree mark. There's no bolt in here, but there's the hole. So I'm lined up with the fully clocked, therefore the engine has been rotated up and to the right as far as possible with the adapter. I've lined up the uh, output shaft. It is in line. It's eight and a half inches below. So the um, propeller shaft, prop shaft, output shaft is in exactly the right position. Uh, the front of the engine has been moved up uh, two and a quarter by two and a quarter, which is roughly what the offsets are. And the back output shaft, my file, which is sticking out, is very, very close to the the arc position that was going to be up two and a quarter and over two and a quarter. So this is the highest position that um, the transfer case would support. So we certainly have lots of room down in here. No problem there. If we go around the other side, uh, we still have our inch and a half clearance here. It's actually slightly shy there just because the truck rolled back and forth a little bit. And um, over here, we have you know, not great, but certainly acceptable clearance to that uh, shackle bolt. Obviously this is not improved because they move together. And this clearance I think is perfectly acceptable between the uh, drive shaft and the bottom of the uh, um, bell housing here. Even at full articulation, after all, this is in the center of the drive shaft, so it pivots back here. So if the axle comes up Right now the bump stops are off. If you can see through there, I think it would probably come up maybe five inches. Um, this would come up two and a half inches, and I have probably three inches of clearance in here. So it's not ideal, but I can't really go any lower. Uh, unless I went to a narrow, you know, a skinny front drive shaft, get a custom drive shaft made up that's made of solid. And um, that's not, you know, I'm not ruling that out, but certainly not something I'd like to do unless I have to. So I'm feeling pretty good about all this. Um, of course, this is a military frame, so it's already been dished out for the uh, drive shaft clearance here. Good thing too, because the truck sits pretty tall. And I actually did some extra dishing when I cut this frame out. When I cut this frame out, I cut this notch out. Similar sort of notch as the military front cross member, uh, because I knew the truck would sit pretty tall, and my last truck was banging here. You can actually see even this one still does a little bit. So, this is pretty much where I think I'd like the truck uh, to have its engine and transmission. However, I can tell you it's going to be a mess with the, uh, the seat box. So, let's find out just how bad that is. Okay, so this tells a sad tale. Um, this bolt should go in that hole. So the seat box has actually already been driven over a bit to the left. This is just not going to happen in here. Um, this opening wants to be about that much wider. Well, you know, I'm actually not feeling too bad about that. Uh, business with having to cut the seat box. Really, what I'm going to have to do is extend this over uh, about two and a half inches, which is basically how far the transmission's moved over. Well, I actually think I can cut and reform a flange here vertical with this corner, straight up and over, pretty close to two and a half inches, uh, which will allow me, if you look at the actual tunnel, This slope here at the back comes along and up. So now it's going to come straight over and down. I'll do the same thing on this piece, which is, if you recognize, is the part that bolts against the bulkhead. So slide that back in there. I'll make the same cut in here, straight over and down, or pretty much the same. The neat thing about that is, now my floor stays the same. This crease here doesn't change. So the, the floor on this side and the floor on this side stay the same. The bulkhead is unaffected. This panel obviously gets trimmed and reflanged. The seat box gets trimmed and reflanged, and I need to make up a new tunnel. Um, really, not that severe when you think about it. Uh, kind of not too worried about it. Now, I haven't mentioned the bulkhead yet. Uh, often with engine conversions, well, one of the great concerns is clearance for the bulkhead. Well, one neat thing about this conversion is the transmission is so long, plus the adapter the stock Land Rover bell housing would have been about here somewhere and that's where it would have had clearance to the to the bulkhead well really now this is actually very small and compact at the location of the front of the bulkhead I haven't done test fit yet but I'm not the least bit concerned that we're gonna have trouble there in fact 
I haven't confirmed it yet, but it may be possible. Well, you can't really tell with my wig and my arms here. But the foot wells actually pass across about here. And it may be possible that you could drastically enlarge the foot well on the driver's side uh, to get more legroom. However, I don't really feel like messing with it, and uh, it's not likely I'm going to do that. The last thing uh, I'd like to talk about is other clearance issues. If you come around the front and look back down into here, I don't know if you can see it's kind of bright here. Clearance here between the uh, differential and the oil pan, about two and a half inches. Um, it's sort of on the angle uh, vertically with the it, when the um, differential bounces up, it's probably closer to three or three and a half inches. Um, not a lot of room. Um, I've confirmed that I only have about another two or two and a half inches of axle travel here. It may look like there's lots, but I still have to put in my uh, bump stops. And this is a military truck, so it has the extra military spacers for the bump stops. And these are about three and a half inches with the bump stop and the spacer. Well, I only have five and a half inches currently between the top of my axle pad and the underside of the frame. Uh, the reason that is is because these parabolic springs, sorry to say, Rocky Mountain, have sagged terribly. Uh, they had less than one year, more like 10 months use on this truck and uh, perhaps it's me and it's the way I drive, I don't know, but I, uh, I've had a lot of bad luck with, with flattening out springs. Um, so this issue here the axle can only come up about two inches, therefore I don't think I'm going to have a problem here. It looks ominous right now, but really the truck is sitting quite a bit lower than uh, it would on decent springs. That's also going to help me with this clearance. So I'm feeling a lot better about that as well, because the truck is at least two inches too low right now, maybe closer to three. I was just going to check some angles and uh, some levels and I have one of these, well, these iPhones and the neat thing about it is it comes at one of these levels you can get. Uh, they're very accurate. In fact, I'm very impressed with it. Uh, for instance, if I set her down on here, I can see that. If I can zoom right in on that, I don't know if you can read it, get the right angle. Uh, I don't know if you can read that because of the glare. Maybe at that angle you can see it. Anyway, it's 21.3 or so degrees. Uh, so that's right on. I've already centered this to the, uh, or zeroed it to the uh, horizontal of the truck. And uh, if I check the truck fore and aft, the frame, again, I don't know if you can read that at that angle. Oh, there, if I come low, it's not so bad. You're pretty close. In fact, it's almost exactly 0.0, .0 degrees. Uh, so if I take that up and put it on the engine, I think on the rocker cover here in these grooves are a pretty accurate way to do this. But look at that, we're at one, about a one degree. Again, I don't know if you can read that. Um, but all my offsets are set up properly. One thing I didn't do before I uh, took out the series motor, uh, because I never would have thought of it, is I don't know if the series motor sits in a Land Rover exactly horizontal versus the frame. Uh, so that's interesting and uh, I won't worry about it. One of the things I was concerned about since the start of this project is routing the exhaust. Um, the uh, factory exhaust manifolds stick way out the side, so I knew I was going to need headers or block cutting headers of some sort, and these ones I got seem pretty good. In fact, it's going to work out really, really well, I think. This collector here has a fair amount of room. This pipe will come up on slight, just slightly up to get over this uh, cross member, and then I think I'm going to drop it down and across underneath the transfer case. Uh, ahead of the transfer case cross member, uh, leaving me a, quite a bit of clearance and the pipe will actually be tucked behind the main cross member here so it'll be free of any damage or risk of damage. And on the other side, so that'd be the crossover for the Y pipe, it'll pop out basically here somewhere and look at all the room I have over here. Come straight back from the other pipe up just a little bit, put my Y pipe in here, lots of room through here head out through the PTO hole. So that's going to work out really, really slick. Now I just got to find a good stainless steel exhaust system manufacturer, fabricator.